protected topics for paper 3 AQA A level chemistry exam 2022 so what's gonna be in your exam this is in general for paper 3 there will be practical skills so with two to three practicals and there will be knowledge questions related to your practicals and of course there will be several math questions and the MCQ or multiple choice questions there will be 30 questions what comes in the exam will depend on mainly on what came in paper one and paper two I have some idea about what did it come in these two papers and I know what came last year so I'm gonna give you my own prediction for this year so topic one is the practicals. so you have 12 different practicals um, for your uh, specification so please make sure that you know all your practicals uh, first of all the thin layer chromatography and esterification in organic chemistry came last year in the exam 2023 so they are very unlikely that will come up again this year so these two so, uh, practicals uh, most probably will not be in your exam the most uh, likely topics to come or practicals to come are the thermodynamics one uh, ones related to uh, reaction rate and enthalpy change measuring the emf of electrochemical cell because this hasn't a feature in the exam for quite a few years now so most probably it will come up in the exam this year uh, pH change uh, because pH is one of the topics that come up a lot in the exams and it hasn't featured in paper one this year so um, there is a big uh, chance that you might have this practical uh, making a standard solution and titration and that include questions about uncertainty make sure that uh, you know that when you calculate the uncertainty if you take two measurements then you multiply the uh, uncertainty by two and of course chemical tests this is for organic and organic and transition metal because these are very common in the exam it doesn't have to be one of the long um, questions or the one practical questions they could come up just in the multiple choice it's very common in the exam to ask you questions about hazards safety and mistakes in the setup so make sure when you revise your practical that you know the correct setup for all of your uh, experiments and make sure to know the hazards of all the chemicals that you are using in each practical and what would be the safety procedure uh, that you need to follow uh, for the safety of your um, uh, test or your practical the topics that may feature in your exam especially in uh, the knowledge based side or in the multiple choice questions are polymers so um, polymers is one of the topics that comes a lot in paper three and if it hasn't featured in paper two then most probably you're gonna have several questions about polymers probably one of the long questions will be about polymers so make sure that you know them very well so addition polymers of alkenes and drawing the repeating unit for a certain alkene uh, polyalkene uh, condensation polymerization I uh, remember that uh, condensation polymerization could be either an a polyester or polyamides and it could be a di um, acyl chloride or it could be um, a dicarboxylic acid with either a diol or with a diamine naturally occurring polymers proteins and DNA last year there was a long question about protein and that included a um, question about the TLC um, and how to separate the different amino acids using TLC so probably proteins will not feature a lot in your exam but DNA hasn't been in the exam for quite a few years now so maybe you're gonna find the question about DNA so make sure that you know the structure of the DNA make sure that you know the hydrogen bonding and the DNA double strand uh, thymine with adenine and guanine with cytosine um, if nothing about the environmental hazard has come up in the exam and they bring you a question about polymer they might ask you about the two uh, to compare the two different types of polymers and compare between them in terms of the disposal and the type of bonds and so on uh, and this is going to be like they are um, actually asking you about bonding and asking you at the same time about environmental impact when it comes to disposal 
Um, when it comes to protein, I think they might ask you questions about enzymes and the structure of protein, like primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structures. So make sure that you know about these uh, structures and make sure that you read about enzymes, how to inhibit enzymes, and all, everything related to enzymes. Um, purifying of organic molecule, because this is one of the main uh, practical skills, there might be question if they uh, if one of the organic practicals came in the exam for any reason, even if it's not one of your main practical, but it's a practical uh, method for preparing, for example, dehydration of an alcohol, for example, uh, they might ask you uh, questions about the different steps and purifying of the organic molecules. For example, that you need to know that you add water to remove water-soluble impurities during the washing up step, the, that you add drying agent to remove of excess water like anhydrous magnesium sulfate or calcium chloride, uh, the use of separating funnel to uh, remove water soluble impurities from the product, uh, volatile, if you have volatile liquids as your product, you use uh, distillation, make sure that you know how to do the distillation and the direction of water in the uh, condenser, it comes from the bottom to the top, not the other way around, and for the um, condenser as well. If you do reflux, make sure that you don't cover the condenser at the top, otherwise the pressure will build up inside the condenser. Um, remember, if the boiling points of the different uh, reactants and products are um, in close range, then you need to separate them using fractional distillation rather than simple distillation. A recrystallization is important as well, and they might ask you if there is a solid product, how to purify it using recrystallization. Uh, remember that melting points and boiling points can be used as good indicator for a purity. Chromatography, as I said, TLC came um, up in the exam last year was a long question, so most probably will not be in your exam this year. Um, there, well, uh, well, there was a long question, as I said, so, um, but um, maybe if chromatography came in the exam, uh, they would ask you more about the chromatography techniques like gas chromatography, so make sure that you read about the other chromatography methods other than the TLC. Uh, it wouldn't hurt if you look at TLC as well, but this, as I said, was a long question last year. So make sure that you know about gas chromatography, liquid chromatography, and how to, uh, solid liquid chromatography, and how to separate the components. Uh, functional group chemical test for organic uh, molecules, um, you need to know the test just in case they came up in the exam because chemical tests are very common in paper 3 because they are one of the major uh, practical skills. So remember alkenes, you tested with bromine motor, carboxylic acid with sodium carbonate where there is effervescence and then carbon dioxide with lime motor. For alcohol, you use acidified potassium dichromate test for primary and secondary alcohol, tertiary doesn't give you anything. And remember also they can be tested by reaction with metals and test for hydrogens. For halogen alkanes, it's the sodium hydroxide and silver nitrate test to compare the reactivity of the different halogen, halogen alkanes. Aldehydes and ketones, the three different tests that distinguish between aldehydes and ketones, which are the tollen uh, reagent test, the acidified potassium dichromate test, and the filling reagent test. All of these are positive for aldehydes. Isomerism. Isomerism is one of the favorite topics in paper three, um, and it's it featured massively in paper two. I think there will be at least one question about isomerism. Uh, so uh, you need to, um, um, if there's a question about dehydration, elimination, nucleophilic substitution, or nucleophilic addition, so you would expect a follow-up question on uh, isomerism. So normally there will be at least one multiple choice question on isomerism. Uh, you need to make sure that you know all the basic principles, structure isomers and stereoisomers, what is the difference between them, the different types of stereoisomer, the E and Z alkenes, uh, and also the optical isomers. You know to know, uh, you need to know how to draw the two different optical isomers or the enantiomers. So when you do this, you draw one and then you draw the mirror image of the 
uh, this one as the second isomer. When you do your drawing, remember to use the wedged uh, bonds, these two, one at the solid, the other one is a dashed uh, wedged bond uh, when you draw your isomers, optical isomers. Organic reaction, you need to have some refresher of all of the organic reactions, uh, mainly the names of the different organic reactions, the conditions for the each reaction and the uh, products. Uh, there will be questions about organic reaction. This is um, a definite question in your exam because there's a lot of questions in organic, especially in the multiple choice questions. Uh, Sometimes they ask you about mechanisms to draw mechanisms action but it's not very common in paper three especially if you have covered a lot of mechanisms in paper two which is very common in paper two of course because uh, most of the content of paper two is organic chemistry so any mechanism that features in uh, paper two will not be in paper three but uh, there might be a question although it's not very likely Chemical tests for ions, make sure that you know all your chemical tests. So test tube reactions, um, these are the simple test tube reactions that can be ident done to identify the following ions. Group two ions um, um, using ammonia, sodium hydroxide in excess and using excess sulfuric acid. Ammonium ions, uh, warm with sodium hydroxide and test the fumes with litmus paper. Halide ions, silver nitrate test and then complexation with ammonia. Remember that when you do the silver nitrate test, you add nitric acid at first to exclude any carbonate uh, or any other um, ions, um, the presence of any other um, uh, ions or anions, um, which makes um, insoluble uh, compounds with silver. Uh, test for hydroxide ion, the carbonate ion, of course, with dilute hydrochloric acid and then carbon dioxide tested for by lime motor. A test for sulfate ion, this is the barium chloride test. And then the aqua, uh, the aqua ions, uh, this was in the exam last year, so most probably will not be in the exam this year. But just in case, uh, have a look at these and know what are the different tests, because there was a long question about the aqua ions uh, last year. pH, um, as I said, it features a lot in the exam. And as it hasn't come in paper one, then it's most probably you're going to have questions about pH. So make sure that you know your equations. Make sure you know how to calculate the buffer solution and what makes a buffer solution, the two different components in a buffer solution, how to plot a pH curve, because if there is a practical on pH, they will ask you to plot a pH curve. Um, calorimetry, uh, calorimetry and enthalpy change, as I said, um, uh, thermodynamics will be definitely in the exam in a way or another. So calorimetry is a practical that hasn't been in the exam last year. So um, you need to know your calorimetry and enthalpy change, how to do these calculations. Um, expect a question related to the topic as well, maybe in the multiple choice question if the practical doesn't uh, fit, uh, come um, as one of the long questions. So, uh, for example, enthalpy of formation. Shapes of molecules, um, shapes of molecules in relation to the number of electron pairs, you need to revise these ones, make sure you know them very well. The effect of shape on uh, polarity, which molecules will have a permanent dipole. Remember that something like carbon dioxide has polar bonds, but it doesn't have a permanent dipole because the two uh, dipoles and the molecule act on opposite directions, they cancel each other out. Uh, carbon tetrachloride is an another uh, nonpolar molecule which has four polar bonds so you need to know this and maybe you um, if they ask you to explain in one of the long questions then you should be able to explain why these are the nonpolar the shapes of molecules, a very quick recap, two bonds no longer will be linear, three bonds no longer will be triangular uh, planar with uh, 120 uh, degree um, um, angle. The four bonds no longer will be tetrahedral, this is uh, two in two planes, not one plane. Uh, three bonds, one lone pair, trigonal pyramidal. Uh, two bonds, uh, two lone pair, like water, it will be pent. The five bonds, no lone pair, will be trigonal uh, by pyramidal. And three bonds, two lone pair, will be T-shaped. And four bonds, one lone pair, a CISO. 
a six bonds no lone pair will be octahedral and four bonds two lone pair will be square planar period three elements if period three elements hasn't been in the exam then you at least will expect uh, a question in the multiple choice section about uh, period three elements so make sure that you revise this topic um, calculations of concentration and titration, this is very common. Definitely there will be questions where they ask you to calculate concentrations um, either through titration or through a sample um, for any reaction. Uh, they would ask you to calculate the yield or the concentration, so make sure that you know the uh, mass. Uh, make sure that you know how to improve your method um, for the titration, for example. Uh, make sure how to calculate the uncertainty, the, as I said before, the hazard safety, and of course, uh, calculation because the exam will have a lot of math questions. Catalysis, so it's very common unless it came up heavily in paper one. So uh, you need to know the difference between homogeneous and heterogeneous catalyst. They would give you different reaction and ask you which one would be homogeneous, which one will be heterogeneous. Remember that this is related to the state of the catalyst in relation to the state of the reactant. Transition metals, so we should know the shapes of the different transition metals and their aqua, uh, aqua ions. Um, colorimetry would be one of the uh, practical skills as well, or one of the possible topics to feature in paper three. So you should know how to establish or how to create a calibration curve for the concentration against the absorbance uh, for, the, um, for the calorimetry. Make sure to know how to calculate the delta E. Uh, bonding, so for bonding, um, hydrogen bond features a lot, or intermolecular bonding um, features a lot in the exam, so make sure you know what is hydrogen bonding um, and how to draw hydrogen bonding. Um, need to make sure that um, you understand the difference in the melting points of different compounds in relation to the intermolecular uh, bonding between them, whether it's a dipole, a dipole interaction, van der Waals, or whether it's hydrogen bonding. Um, make sure that you know about delocalized electrons. We find these in uh, graphite, we find them in metals, and in benzene rings.